Okay, <laughs> welcome. Frank School. First of all, sorry for my uh, uh, poor piano playing when I tried to show you the diminished seventh. So sorry about that. Another thing, alle Anfang, alle Anfang ist schwer. They say in German, all beginnings are hard, are heavy. Well, this is the beginning. I'm going to start to teach about that movie. Um, now, Brother, Sun, Sister, Moon. Here is the film. There, look, the cover looks like this. Uh, It'd be rather hard to get, I think, at the moment, or expensive. You, you could, oh well, it, maybe not. But the reason it's now of interest is because the Pope chose the name Francis after St. Francis of Assisi. And this is about St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, it was made in 1972. <clears throat> Franco Zeffirelli, Franco uh, he directed it. He's known for Romeo and Juliet, his, probably his masterpiece, The Taming of the Shrew, uh, with uh, Elizabeth Burton and Richard... Richard Burton. Um, Mel Gibson's Hamlet, he directed that, and Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, uh, now he does, I think he does more in operas now. Uh, the history of my use, what I mean by that is I used this uh, at the end of a school year, several times, several years. I was taking a chance when I did it because it's about a religious subject and it was public school, but I did it anyway. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was a case where I had had the students at that time, I think, for half of two years. So a full year, but watched them grow through seventh and eighth grade. And uh, as the last thing that I did with them, uh, I studied this movie with them. Um, I wanted them to know about St. Francis of Assisi. Um, not even so much for religious reasons. I, I would say not for religious reasons exactly. I had another purpose. But in any case, it's so richly uh, done, so artistically done, that I felt it was very useful. Later, I, I just didn't have time, so I didn't. So the history of my use, you'll hear more about that. This movie is actually probably best known up till now for its score, for the music in it. And I'll have things to say about that score quite a bit. Well, in the viewing that you're going to see, uh, to the best that I can do it, that's going to be an experience. I'll tell you about that at the end here. Uh, there are various themes that you will see in the first 14 minutes of this movie. Uh, to really uh, appreciate this and enjoy it, you would have to get yourself a copy of this and find a way to watch it. I especially think if a school teacher were to use it, what I'm showing would be uh, what I taught as I showed the movie, but I showed the whole movie. I can't really do that uh, with YouTube, but I'll show you. I'll do the best I can. Well, in the first 14 minutes that you would, that if I had a classroom, we would watch today. You know, if I had a classroom of 42 minutes, uh, uh, various themes appear. Uh, some of them are musical. There's about five or six melodies that come back throughout the movie. Now, there are themes. Uh, there's Claire's theme. I'm g giving them my own name. Uh, the mother's theme, that's the lullaby she sings, uh, and others as well. Now, there are other themes as well. The theme of hands. The first close-up that you will have of St. Francis is his hands as they come around a wall. Uh, and if throughout the movie, you're going to see close-ups of hands a lot. There's a second, there's a new cat here named Roger. He, he's a vocal cat, you'll hear him. Um, feet. L later you'll see feet. You don't see them so much yet. Eyes. That's a theme throughout the movie. You're also going to see certain preparations for echoes, things that later on in the movie come back. Uh, uh, that, that's what an echo is. I always wonder whether or not that E goes there. I'm not sure. Um, uh, you'll hear the mother sing a lullaby. Uh, <sighs> You'll see an allusion to the Shroud of Turin. I'm telling you this stuff now because I don't want to have to pause the movie a lot. Uh, I'll get you ready for these. The Shroud of Turin is a famous piece of cloth that many people believe was used to cover the, uh, the dead Jesus. Uh, and you'll see a clear allusion to that. The mother's lullaby, she sings, beautiful woman, I think, with a beautiful voice. She sings it a cappella. Now, when you sing a cappella, if you're not very musical, you're liable to change your pitch. She doesn't. She starts, she ends her lullaby, and when the orchestra comes in, you can see that she maintained her pitch perfectly. Uh, a beaut beaut I, I'm going to have you hear that whole thing. You see, I'm going to fast forward through this movie, through much of it. 
and I'll just just point out here are the things that if I had the time to watch it all, I would pause it at that point and point this out to my students. Um, uh, Claire's theme, uh, you'll hear it as she's running through a field. Well, that's a, 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 an echo, or I mean a preparation for an echo later. Also, she's going to lead St. Francis to lepers, uh, and that is a preparation for an echo. I didn't write here, I guess, I didn't write this down, but you're going to see a series of flashbacks. Uh, St. Francis arrives back in Assisi sick. He has gone to war, and he has come home from the war. Uh, deserted, maybe. His father, you, you learn about his father's character very early. It's developed very early. He's afraid that people will think his son was a coward. Um, the mother speaks French. St. Francis's mother was from France. And uh, when they come running down the street, she says, Francois. And uh, the father says, Francesco. Well, Francis, uh, that's Francois is French. Francesco is Italian. Uh, in the opening song that you hear, uh, dead are the deeds of the stark battlefield, and warm are the loaves. Well, that song has that kind of a beginning in, in several lines. That's called a nastrophe. <laughs> when you start, uh, this is not the, you would normally say the deeds are dead, the loaves are warm in English. You would not say warm are the loaves. When you have unusual word order, that's called anastrophe, uh, and that's in that. All right, uh, well, I'm going to take the camera, and I'm going to set it up so you're looking at a television, and I'm standing beside the television. Uh, you'll probably see my hands now and then. Maybe I'll pause. You'll hear me talk. I'll fast forward, uh, and I don't know how well this will work. Uh, it seems to me it should be okay to put on YouTube because I'm not stealing the movie. I'm analyzing the movie, and I'm quoting it. I hope that works. Uh, all right, so uh, one more video today.